Hello and welcome back. For my loyal followers, no, this isn't deja vu. Uh, I know this is how I started my last video about the Spark Charge Rody mobile DC fast charging unit, but this is another video. It's not the same one, um, but it's along the same lines. Uh, let me explain. So those of you that uh, follow this channel may have seen my video a couple weeks ago where a friend of mine who runs a all electric car rental service here in New Jersey called me because one of his clients ran out of juice in their Model 3 before they could make it to the supercharger. They actually made it to the parking lot of the supercharger, but they were about somewhere around uh, two, 300 yards short and the car just died and wouldn't go another foot. So Bob called me up and I brought this uh, Spark Charge Rody mobile DC fast charging unit and gave him a little boost, just enough for he, the car to power up and he could drive over to the supercharger. So I just got another call from Bob. And wait, before I keep going, before I go any further, um, let me plug this guy in. Uh, I just wanted to demonstrate how you plug it in. This is the charging unit, it fits into the back, it snaps into place, and then it's a regular 120 volt uh, plug. You plug into a 120 volt outlet, and this, you can, might hear the fan start. There's a red light on the bottom. When that turns green, the fan shut off. The car, uh, the battery module is fully charged. Each module is 3.7 kilowatt hour of energy storage, but of that only 3.5 kilowatt hour is usable. So um, these, my, I wasn't prepared to do this. They're mostly charged, but I wanna top off two modules so I can head out because uh, the person who's stranded needs to go about 12 miles to get to a supercharger. Now, when I helped Bob out a couple of weeks ago, I told him, I'm not your mobile roadside assistance person. Uh, I'm, I'm doing tests with these. I'm recording videos. It's, you know, uh, call tow truck. But this person ran out of juice about 10 miles from my house. The last time I had to drive like 45 minutes. Uh, but this guy's really close to me. So I said, you know what? And he knew he was, Bob knew that the car was really close to my house. So I said, all right, I'll charge these things up and go help you out one more time and I'll get another video out of it. Uh, so I'm charging these modules up now. I'm gonna head up to where the person is. I think he got off of Route 206 in Stanhope. He's in a parking lot somewhere. And I have a friend that actually lives right next to him. I mean, like, a quarter of a mile away. So he's gonna meet me there and uh, help me shoot some of the video there. I'm gonna record me pulling up and uh, taking this thing out. I have to take it out, I have to bring it up in my Model 3 because my truck is not available now. My wife has, I have a pickup truck. My wife has that today. So I gotta pack these modules in the trunk of my Model 3 and the charging unit I'm probably gonna put in the back seat. Uh, so, uh, you know, we'll get there one way or the other. Uh, I'm gonna pick up the recording when I'm arriving at the scene. And I'm gonna do some things I didn't do last time. Some of the followers commented that I didn't show the Tesla display screen while we were using the Spar Charge Roadie to charge the car last time. And that was because I only plugged in for a couple of minutes because Bob only had to get like, you know, I said <laughs> 300 yards. But now I'm gonna charge this guy so he can get at least 15 to 18 miles of range. So I'm gonna deplete two of these battery packs uh, and I'll be able to record some of that. We'll see what kilowatt draw that, that, that uh, this is, is the, delivering to the vehicle and how many miles, how long it takes. So I think, I, I think it was worth um, uh, helping my friend out to get another video out of anyway. But Bob, if you're watching this video, this is it. I'm not roadside assistance. Next time call a tow truck or Better yet, rent one of these systems and have one of your employees go out and do this the next time somebody runs out. And like Bob told me last time, this happens really frequently. I really would not have thought that. But I mean, this is twice in two weeks and he has about 20 EVs. He says it happens all the time and he usually has to get the cars towed. So I think it'd be worth it for him to lease one of these systems. Any event, um, before we jump over to where the car is stranded, I wanna remind you guys, don't forget, please click like, subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell, all that good stuff, because that helps other people find this channel and it helps me spread the word about EVs and EV charging. So I appreciate if you do all that stuff for me. And uh, let's uh, pick it up when I'm pulling into the parking lot where this guy's stranded. 
So I charged both modules up to somewhere around 75% and headed out to find the stranded motorist. As I mentioned earlier, I had a friend that lived close by meet me there. He actually found where the person was first and called me so I knew exactly which parking lot he was in. He ended up pulling off the road into the parking lot of a small engine repair shop and the owner was nice enough to let him park in the middle of his parking lot. So I got out of my car, introduced myself to the Model 3 driver and promised them that I'd get him out on the road again. Now the driver had been there about an hour and a half by now, but after waiting about an hour, he realized that the car has the Tesla mobile connector. So he plugged in the 120 volt adapter and plugged it into an outlet that the shop owner allowed him to plug into. And he was charging at 120 volts when I arrived. Now that obviously wasn't going to get him very far, very fast. So he's lucky that I was able to bring the spark charge roadie and get him moving a lot quicker. So I quickly unpacked the unit. As I mentioned earlier, I had the two battery modules in my trunk. Now each module weighs about 73 pounds, so it's not a light system. It's really not meant to be transported the way I did. It's meant to be put in the back of a truck. Uh, and there's the charging unit that sits on top. The chargers aren't quite as heavy as the battery modules, but it's not light either. It weighs a little over 50 pounds. Um, you could see me there, I twisted the emergency stop button and uh, activated the unit because I had it depressed when it wasn't in use. I attached my uh, Chatamo to Tesla adapter and wheeled it over to the stranded Model 3. You could see there that the connector is still plugged in and he was charging on level one. I just put the connector in the trunk and plug in the unit here. Now, when you plug in the roadie, you then have to reach around and turn the system on. It doesn't automatically begin to charge. It takes about four or five seconds. You'll see me nod my head, and that's because I saw the Tesla light in the charge port start to blink, and I could tell that we were charging. I just made sure that the center screen also said actively charging, which it did. I then recorded a quick video of me walking up to the roadie system so you could really see what it looks like and a quick shot of the charge port so you could see that blinking green Tesla logo. And then I hopped in the car so we could take a look and see what the Tesla center screen is telling us. So you could see the car was taking in eight kilowatts and was charging at a rate of 36 miles of range per hour. Now the interesting thing was it's still showing zero miles of range and the guy who ran out has said he was charging on level one for about a half an hour. I would have thought by then he would be showing at least one mile of range. It just goes to show you how low the battery was. He really drove this thing till it wouldn't move anymore, which as Tesla owners will tell you is many miles past the point of where it says zero miles of range remaining because Tesla does hold a decent sized reserve in their battery. You can see at the top, the time is 4.06 p.m. I actually plugged in a minute earlier at 4.05. I'm noting that now because I wanna see how long we charge and how much energy is delivered to the Model 3. After 10 minutes of charging, we had added six miles of range. And I noticed that the roadie system was showing that it only had half the amount of energy left. You see there's two of the four bars showing on both battery modules. Now I didn't start out with a fully charged battery. I actually don't know exactly how charged it was. I think we were about 75% charged. I wish the roadie system came with an app so we could see the state of charge and I know exactly how much energy was in it. That's something I'm going to ask Spark Charge about the next time I speak with them. After 22 minutes of charging, we had added 14 miles of range to the car. Not quite enough for me to let him go yet. The supercharger he needs to make it to is 12 miles away, and I want to add at least 16 or 17 miles so he has a, a few mile cushion. I don't want this poor guy running out twice in one day. Now you will notice that it says that we're now charging at 13 kilowatts. You'll recall when we first plugged in, we were only pulling eight kilowatts. That only lasted for two or three minutes, and then I saw it jump up to nine, 10, 11, 12, and then 13. But it's leveled off at 13 and has been charging at 13 kilowatts the whole time. Now the Spark Charge Roadie system can charge it up to 20 kilowatts, but it is dependent on the pack voltage. As the voltage in the 
battery pack increases, the charging rate will increase. And I think the pack voltage has to be up over 400 volts in order for the roadie to deliver the full 20 kilowatts. But I really need to speak with Spark Charge to get 100% clarity on that. The Spark Charge shut off at 430 as the batteries were fully depleted. At that point, it was showing that we have 18 miles of range. Again, more than enough to get this person to the supercharger, which was 12 miles away. Now, just a minute earlier, I had switched the Tesla display screen over to energy from distance and it was showing that we had put four kilowatt hour into the pack now this was only one minute before it shut off you could see it's 429 there and the unit shut off at 430 we're at seven percent state of charge we're charging at 13 kilowatt and we had put four kilowatt hour into the battery at this point Switching it back over to distance, you could see he's got 18 miles of driving range now. So in 25 minutes of charging, we added 18 miles of range and probably a little bit more than 4 kilowatt hour. Now I would expect to add a little more than 4 kilowatt hour, considering that I had two batteries that were about 75% charged each. Now, again, I didn't have the exact state of charge. I need to talk to Spark Charge about this, but two fully charged batteries should be able to deliver seven kilowatt hour to the vehicle. And if the state of charge was correct and we were at 75% state of charge, I should have been able to deliver more than four kilowatt hour. So I still have to do some more testing with the system. I actually, I'm gonna fully charge all three battery packs that I have and put them into my Model 3 and then see exactly how much energy the car takes in. But that's probably gonna come in a week or two in my next uh, Spark Charge update video. So that's it for our roadie system, Rescues of Model 3 Part 2. If you like what we're doing here, please don't forget, click that subscribe button, ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on State of Charge.